Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. I've got the Marvel Comics shirt on because we are going to talk about the incredible comic book and toy and cards haul that I did that I showed you two videos back at the very end. So I've teased you long enough with this and I want to just go over some of this stuff with you myself actually for the first time. I haven't even gone through it all so I'm going to take some of the stuff out and, and show it to you and we'll go over some of it together. Some of it I know uh, but uh, obviously but uh, other parts I don't. So um, before I do that I just want to welcome in some of the new subscribers such as uh, Hector Rivera, Thanks so much for stopping by and also for leaving comments down below. Appreciate the support and always appreciate the support of Ozzy Morrison, who's always leaving comments down below. Appreciate that, you guys. Uh, also want to just give out uh, special support to Noel Griffiths, who uh, is in the hospital right now uh, due to a freak kind of accident. And I hope that you are feeling better, Noel. I want to thank you for being one of the earlier supporters. Uh, of this channel and of the uh, Facebook Reselling Resource Center. I really appreciate that and I hope that uh, you enjoy this video while you're recovering as you see some of the stuff that I, uh, that I was able to get together. So best of wishes to you. Um, so with that being said, what I wanna just start out with is just a bit of a background in terms of how I was able to acquire all this stuff. Uh, because when you find out what I paid for it, which I'll tell you more towards the end, you might not believe it, but it's actually true. If you don't want to hear any of this stuff and you know you, you just uh, you find that stuff boring, that's fine. Just skip ahead to when you see me pulling out the toys and the comic books and stuff like that. But I think it's important that you understand the background because you know your you have to remember your job as a business person is to get the materials at the lowest possible cost uh, so that you can resell it for a good profit. And you have to anticipate that when you buy products, especially when you buy them in bulk, like I did here that there's going to be some damaged product along the way that you're gonna find that you're just gonna to have to toss that you won't be able to do anything with. So you have to kind of factor that into it. So um, with that being said, basically what happened to sum it up is that I have a Craigslist ad, I have many of them, but one of them focuses on comic books. It specifically says I'm looking for comic books, it's big and flashy, the comic books, um, like you know, kind of like in the old Batman 1960s uh, uh, logo, just really kind of flashy out there to grab attention. That's actually what the person said to me when I met up with him. He said, yeah, that ad caught my attention. So that's one tip right there. When you're putting ads on Craigslist, make sure you use a flashy graphic. Most of my competitors uh, in the market locally who are also looking for comic books don't use any kind of um, graphic. And if they do, it's not really catchy. So that's one thing. Um, uh, two, so he contacts me and he says, I have some comic books and I have some toys. If you're interested, I'll send you a list. I said, sure, send me a list. He sends me a list, but the list is only of the toys. It's not of the comics. He tells me the comics aren't really that great. Uh, and he tells me that, uh, you know, these toys are mostly from the 1990s. Now you could do okay with some toys from the 1990s, depending on what they are, but it wasn't anything spectacular. It wasn't anything that really had me that excited. So. Uh, I basically told them, you know, listen, um, no, I'm not really that interested based on what I'm seeing. I even gave them the um, uh, number of someone else I know uh, locally who I thought might be interested in the, in the items. Um, and then he wrote me back and he said, no, 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 no. He goes, you know, I saw your ad. I really just thought I'd just try to do a deal with you. He goes, if I, if I don't, um, you know, if I don't sell these soon, he goes, because, you know, I really need room. He goes, I'm just going to bring them to the Goodwill and I'm just going to donate them. And then I asked him, you know, well, where are you from? And he said, uh, you know, just see how far away he is. And he tells me he's in North Syracuse. Now, North Syracuse, as I keep telling you over and over and over, it's this collector's haven city near me where almost everyone's house, is, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but... I mean, so many of the houses there are just filled with collectibles and vintage items. And it's just amazing to me what's over there. So uh, when I heard that, I said, all right, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what. How about I stop by in person? And this is a technique I've done before. St let me just stop by in person, take a look, and we'll see. I'll see what's going on and see if we can make a deal. And he said, sure. You know, no problem. Uh, I'll be free. Uh, you know, probably be free tomorrow. Uh, you know, it's a little tricky during the week. So I said, okay. 
So, um, the next day I didn't hear anything and I, you know, contacted him via text, via text and asked if he was available. He said, yep, sure. So we arranged a time at night to, uh, arranged a time at night to go over there. Now, um, that's, that's just another tip there too. You can't wait around for people to contact you. Um, you know, you, if you have an, an established contact, reach back out and try to, you know, see if you could get the deal done right then and there. Because what you don't want, you don't want it people who tell you that they want to sell. You don't want to give them too much time to think, especially if it's their own collection, which this was his own collection. Because then what's going to happen is the more time they have to think about it, the more time they'll say, nah, I don't really want to sell it right now. So you want to get it while it's hot. Once you get it, and when I say hot, I don't mean stolen. I mean, you just want to get it while they uh, want to... Um, you know, sell the item. And clearly, you know, in my mind, I now know this person is really motivated to sell. He wants to get rid of it. He's literally saying he's going to donate it. And if he's going to donate it, that gives me leverage in negotiation because, you know, basically almost anything that I offer is going to be better than what he would have got if he was donating. He said, I don't have time to, sh you know, sh shop it around and get the best price and have multiple people come over here. I was fortunate through my ad that that grabbed his attention and so he really just wanted to deal with me even when I tried to walk away from the deal. That's another part I've talked about in my negotiation videos is when you're willing to walk away is when you will make the best deal because you know you show by that you have buying power. If you have enough inventory and you don't feel desperate to purchase stuff, you're going to make better purchasing decisions and you could be more selective and the person who you're buying from, if he knows that, he's going to be more willing to make a deal more towards your end. So these are just some negotiation strategies before I, you know, show you exactly what I found. Anyway, so I get there and I walk in. Now remember, I'm walking into a situation where what I'm thinking I'm going to is 50 comic books, because that's what he told me, and 26 toys. And instead, what I find is this giant tub i mean it's so heavy it's hard for me to even pull it up filled with comic books way more than 50 books there's got to be about 250 books in there okay now so there's that then there's this thing of toys now by the way right now this is cut open okay you see how big this box is just so you know when i went in there these were all stacked up unopened. He had not opened these boxes in years. In fact, while we're having conversation, he's telling me about two items, which I'm going to show you here. There's these big toys back here that he didn't know where they were and he thought someone stole them. He didn't even realize they were in the box. So um, it was just he was opening them up for the first time in a long time and you know he was discovering them along with me but he did say you know i told you whatever you find will be yours so i'm not going to really there was like one or two things that he wanted to keep for him that really didn't have much value it was just sentimental value for him whenever people say that by the way i i i let them have it you know unless it was some major item that would have been something i was going over there specifically for then that could potentially be a deal breaker but with little things like that i let people just take you know you have to understand it's a collector and if it's a sentimental value for the person as long as it's no big you know kind of deal breaker kind of thing just let the person have it but anyway so saw that so there's this one here okay then there's another one okay now it was in this box when I went there, okay, but it was all sealed up. So we're opening it up for the first time. They're taped up. So there's those two. So we'll go through that. Then there's another one here. I mean, this whole tubby filled with toys. Now, all these toys, well, I should say 99% of them are all new in the package, okay? A term that people will use for these in the collecting industry is that there. It, see, this is called the, a, a card. Now, you don't think of it as a card because if you're new to this area, you're thinking of baseball cards, sport cards. But this is actually called a card. And so when it is new in the package, okay, some terms you want to know. If it's in a box, for example, it'll be called NIB or new in box. If it's like this, if it's an original package, you could call it NIP, new in package. Um... So this is actually called, so it's called, it's on card because the figure is still considered onto the card like that. 
So if it's on card, it's always going to be worth more. If the item had a, uh, like a punch out area right here that would have been poked out. Now this one, I don't believe had one, um, but sometimes they have like something that would actually have gotten punched out. If you have it unpunched, meaning it never actually even hung on a peg in the store, that will be worth much more money compared to if the item was punched through. So that's just another thing to look for, punched versus unpunched. Those are some terms, that keywords that you would want to use when listing and when searching for comps, because that will significantly um, affect the value. If I find anything that's unpunched in here, I'll, I'll show it to you so you know uh, what I'm talking about. So, uh, so anyway, so there was that. Then there was this one. There's another whole box of toys right here. Then, in addition to that, he had all these cards. So I'll show you some of these later, but all of these are all different types of cards. Now, a couple things I'm just gonna tell you about cards. If they're sports cards and they're from the 1980s and 1990s, do not purchase them, okay? I mean, there might be a few exceptions of some individual cards that you wanna find, but as a general rule of thumb, as a lot, those types of cards are essentially worthless because they were massively overproduced. Um, for the same reason, many types of comic books from the 1990s are also pretty much worthless because they were also massively produced. The 1990s was really a year, um, or actually I should say a, a series of years, a decade, where um, collectors were starting to realize, oh, wait a minute, all these books and comic books and cards from the 1950s, they're now commanding all this, all this money on the market. Well, so now what we're going to do is we're going to hoard up all of these collectibles now so that when we get older that it's worth a lot of money. The problem is it doesn't work that way because the reason why it worked previously is because no one ever thought to save the stuff. So most people threw it out or their mothers threw it out. So there wasn't much of it around. There was low supply, but there was high demand. You have to understand the economic principles of supply and demand in order to be do a good job in your business, especially if it's a reselling business, because it's gonna affect how you price things as well. But it also helps understand the market forces from the past as well, and why certain items are valuable now, and why certain ones aren't. So um, that's just some information about uh, books from the uh, 90s, and um, you know, comic books from the 90s, and why a lot of them don't have uh, much value these days. Of course, there's a few exceptions to everything, but that's just a general rule of thumb. So anyway, so moving on, um, let me go over some of the specifics. And um, I think one of the things I'm going to start out with, I maybe just kind of move around a little bit. So I'm not doing all comics, all toys, all cards. So maybe I'll bump around a little bit. But let me start with my favorite area, which is comic books. Now, I will tell you that when I was there, what I did is I just kind of skimmed through the um, uh, comic books. And I did not look at every single individual one of them. And I literally did not realize until I came home that night and started looking through some of what was there that I found things I had no clue were, were there at the time. And I can't believe they were in there. Um, one of which is this book. Okay. Now this is from the 1980s. This is, um, let me get it in better light for you. Marvel uh, Superhero Secret Wars number eight. Now you could possibly come across this comic at a garage sale or an estate sale. Uh, and if you do, you want to pick it up. Remember this. This is the first time that Spider-Man has this black suit on him. Uh, the reason why that's relevant is that suit is called the alien costume and it's actually an al a suit that's alive and it tries to hurt him and kill him and eventually it goes on to somebody else named Eddie Brock and Eddie Brock then turns into Venom. Venom is an important character who uh, I actually have some comics here. I'll show you what he looks like in a minute. But there's a Venom movie coming out in October. Now these Marvel movies have been huge smashing successes. And so, as a result, whenever the movies come out about a certain character, their comic books jump up in value or any toys associated with them jump up in value. So what a lot of people do is they buy the books or they buy the toys and they, you know, they have them kind of ready so when the movie comes out and the popularity goes up, then they put them on the market and it's a smart move because that's when the items are at their, there's the highest demand for them. So especially if you have something that is um, um, 
you know, low in frequency in terms of you know, availability and there's high demand for it, you could really get good prices for it. Now this type of book right here, it's, you know, it's, it's ungraded. I'll talk to you about grading later, but it's in very good, uh, I shouldn't say very good because that's a comic term, but it's an excellent condition. Um, so this could go anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks, just this book. So, um, I, you know, that's, that's good. Now keep that in mind. I said 50 to a hundred dollars just for this book. When I talk to you about wh how much I spent for every single thing here. Now I still haven't looked through all this, but one other comic book I want to tell you about, because this is, um, one of the comics that's considered a Holy grail for, for collectors. It's tomb of Dracula number 10. And the reason why that's important to know is because most people think and there's a partial basis of truth to this, that the first issue is always the one that's worth, worth the most. That's not necessarily true, okay? I just sold Tomb of Dracula number one. It was officially graded by CGC. It had a 7.5 rating, which is in the very fine um, range. Um, and that wound up uh, selling for $150, okay? However, if I would have had this book right here, Tomb of Dracula number 10, let me get in a better light there for you, Tomb of Dracula number 10, which the reason why it's important is that it is the first appearance of this guy right here, who is um, Blade the Vampire Slayer, and he's a very famous uh, character, and as a result of that, this book, if this book was in near mint condition, which it's not, but if it was, and I had it, if I sent it in for, for grading and they put it in a plastic slab and it graded out at a 9.8, this book would sell for around $6,000, okay? Now, if I send it in and it comes back at a lower grade, okay, and which it would because you could see here, if I bring this up close to you, that there is some damage to the to the book. So you could see here, like there's some, uh, you know, some paper is missing. I mean, the binding is still intact, but there's creases and there's some ripples in it and stuff like that. Um, so even if it came back at like, let's say a rating of like a five, I mean, this still would be like a $200 book um, or, you know, $250, $200, something like that, if it's officially graded. So I'll talk to you real quick about grading. If you have a book that is something like this, which they consider like a holy grail issue or a key issue is another term for it, where something really important happened, the appearance of a first character, um, uh, you know, for the first time, or if it's a first issue of something, um, that might be something that you want to send off to a company like CGC. There's other ones called CBCS or PGX. And what they'll do is they'll take your book, professionals will look at it and they'll evaluate it on a scale of one to 10. And the uh, 10 would be the best, which would be called gem mint. And below that, it is uh, near mint. Below that, you get into the very fine range. And there's, uh, there's combinations of things, like there's very fine slash near mint. Uh, there's also um, fine, then there's very good, then there's good, and uh, then there's fair, and then there's poor. So there's all these different ranges, and it actually you know, could go from 0 0.5 to, 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 uh, to 10. And depending on what it comes back, it will, you know, significantly increase the value compared to if it was just estimated to be at that range, but it wasn't actually formally graded and in, in the slab. So for example, if you had a book that came back and it said it's worth, it's a 9.8, that might give you $6,000. But if you had it outside of the official slab and you said to someone it was near mint and it looked near mint, you might only get a third of that. So grading can be something that's really um, worth doing and worth investing in. So, um, you know, that might be a topic, again, more for like a whole separate video, but I just wanted to let you know about that, that that does affect the, the grades. So there's some other things in here that are pretty cool. I'm going to just put these toys to the side for a minute so um, I could go through some of this stuff for you and we'll see some other things that are in here. There's another Tomb of Dracula, by the way, in the back, issue 23. Tomb of Dracula, if you see Tomb of Dracula, I don't care what issue it is, there are many issues that they publish, pick it up because they, they do have value to them. It's a popular series. This one's really cool. This is Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is another popular uh, character. And what I like about this is that this here says it's a proof set. 
Okay, so this is an official set that came out where they were um, putting out some uh, special drawings for the series. And you can see here it says Keepsake, Keepsake Collection on the back. And I took this out and um, you could see here that the seal is not broken and it is unopened. I have not looked this up. I don't know what it's going to go for, but you could see here it has uh, six giant sized uh, black and white trading cards of the first five covers. It also has a limited uh, printing of 5,000 numbered sets. Uh, it has uh, the original Ghost Rider artwork, and it has six regular-sized full-color full trading cards. And you can see here on the bottom, it's numbered. It's proof set number 118. All of that means value. So that stuff is, um, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff you want to look for. Things that are sealed, things that aren't open things that have limited numbers associated with them. I haven't had the time to look all this up and I will eventually, but if I waited to do that to do this video, I'd never get the video done. So um, I'm just gonna pick up some stacks here and we're kind of go through uh, um, a little bit more. I won't go through all the books quite just yet and then I'll kind of mix into some toys. But um, you know, just, just to see here, just to get a sense of the age of the books, um, if you go here, you know, you're going to see this. This is Marvel 2 and uh, uh, Marvel Feature, sorry, Marvel Feature Presents. And you can see here, you could tell the age of the books by the price on it. So that's 20 cents. Uh, so that uh, you know, comic book would be from somewhere around the 1970s. So we'll crack this one open, for example, just to take a look. And so, uh, you know, we'll see exactly the age on that one. So um, let's see here. So the thing and Iron Man together. Yeah, so this is a 1973 book. And, you know, with the comics, if you're new to comic books, when you open them up like this, this is called the Indica on the bottom. This is where you will see the where you will see the um, the the year listed of the book for the older books. They'll generally be in there. Sometimes they'll be on the inside flap. It depends on the company, depends on the book. But that's where you're going to look uh where you're gonna look for it. Now, one thing just to tell you about uh, age of comic books by looking at the price, don't make the mistake of seeing uh, a comic book series called Marvel Age and thinking that because it says 25 cents on it that that's an old comic book. It's really not, they're from the 80s, but they all the other books were being priced much more than that, but Marvel Age was a 25 cents book. And the reason for that is that Marvel Age was basically a promotional book that Marvel used to promote other comic books that they were coming out. So they were essentially giving it away and just covering minimal costs by charging 25 cents. But people who are don't know much about comics sometimes see Marvel Age for 25 cents and think, wow, they found this really old comic book, where essentially what they found were a bunch of worthless books. Uh, now, there's some Marvel Age that some people like. Um, one of them has Stan Lee on the cover, and uh, you know he's drawn as... Uh, you know, as a, as a comic character, so some people like that one. But in general, the Marvel Ages aren't worth much. So there's that Marvel Feature Presents, and some of them, this is what I said earlier, Marvel 2-in-1, because the thing is in a lot of these. He's this uh, rock-like character from the Fantastic Four. So we got Marvel 2-in-1s here. Um, another one that is popular, especially if you find some old ones, is Marvel Team-Up right there. So we got Marvel Team Up, especially if it has Spider-Man in it, you definitely want to pick that up. That's worth it. Now remember, I'm going over there and I'm thinking that all there's going to be are comic books from the 1990s. And here we got books from the 1970s. You know, this is a great time to find comic books is 1970s. You know, here we got a uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, you know, it's an old one, 40 cents. So this is probably somewhere in the 80s, you know, 1980s for that one. Um, uh, actually, sorry, just missed it, 1979, so it's right there. Um, you know, sometimes you get these borderline books uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what year it's going to go into. Um, Luke Cage, uh, also a popular uh, character. Uh, he's an African-American comic book character, and so he's pretty popular as well. Uh, he's one of the first African-American uh, comic book characters, if not the first African-American comic book character that Stan Lee uh, put out there with Marvel, and so he has a good fan following. Another one I just mentioned earlier was Ghost Rider. Um, now, here's something I'm going to teach you about comic books that a lot of people will make a mistake on. They'll get a book like this, and it says Ghost Rider, and it says six, and they'll say, wow, look, I found Ghost Rider number six. That must be worth a lot of money, but it's really not Ghost Rider number six. 
it's Marvel Spotlight number six, where they featured Ghost Rider. And if you want to figure out, because it can get confusing, especially if you're new into comic books, again, what you want to do is you want to open this book up. And here's another trick, by the way. When you open up comic books and you take the book out, don't make the mistake of pulling it out like this because what's going to happen, it's going to catch on to the cover and you're going to rip the cover. So take your tape off, put it onto the side like this, and now you will not rip your book when you pull it out. That is the best way to guarantee you will not rip the book. It's called taping the book. You don't want to tape your book, okay? So you take this out though, we'll open it up, and you'll see right here, if I bring this up, it says Marvel Spotlight. That's how you find the title, right there. That's how you find it. So if you're ever confused, just remember that. Just crack it open like that and you'll uh, you'll know your title. For people who are new and trying to learn about uh, comics from this channel, I hope that some of these tips could help you out. And just, you know, rather than it just being me, you know, showing off a bunch of things that I found, I hope to give you some tips along the way that you could find that are useful. So there's a bunch of these Marvel Spotlights on Ghost Rider. Um, Marvel Spotlight on Ghost Rider. Now, this is actually Ghost Rider, okay? Not Marvel Spotlight on Ghost Rider, you see? It says Ghost Rider, Marvel Comics Group, but that's just the name of the company that made it. So this is actually uh, Ghost Rider uh, number 68. So you can see the, the actual uh, issue up there. So that's how you would separate um, whether or not you've got the actual um, you know, original series or whether or not you have just the character who's being featured in a different series. So we got a bunch of those. We got a bunch of Ghost Riders in here. Um, now look at this. I'm just seeing this for the first time. Did not see seeing it with you for the first time. Remember I showed you earlier, Marvel Secret Wars number eight with Spider-Man in the alien costume. It's a 12 part series. You could tell that from the top because here's issue number one, right there. Issue number one. Now if all the issues are here, to Marvel Superheroes number uh, uh, Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars, if all of those are here, which I don't, we're gonna we're gonna see for right now as I go through them. If all twelve are here and they're in, in decent condition, that's probably gonna sell for around two hundred twenty-five dollars just for those twelve bucks. Now you gotta be careful because there is also Marvel Superhero Secret Wars two, but it's easy to figure out because there'll just be two Roman numerals after it. Um, but let's see, we've got number one, and is number two behind? No. Okay, so we've got old Conan book over here, and uh, it's got a fair amount of damage to it. However, it is Conan number 19, so it's still something that um, someone will buy. And here's another tip for you. They're called reader copies. In other words, for especially for books that are more expensive, like Spider-Man, people don't want to spend, some people don't want to spend crazy amounts of money to get the books, but they still want the original story. So what they'll do is they'll they'll buy a damaged book like this for you know much lower cost, but still something that you could flip and make some a decent cash on. Um, and what they'll do, they'll just, they don't care about the condition so much. They just want to read the story. So to have this story, or um, there are people who actually go and sell um, loose covers. So they'll buy the loose cover and they'll affix it onto their book and now they've basically have a restored book. Or they'll make a custom cover for themselves to put onto a coverless book or a book that had a lot of cover damage. So just so you know, you know, that's um you could actually sell some old damaged books even without the covers on them. I've done uh well selling without the covers. So we've got the defenders here. Um, this is another popular series. You see 20 cents. So this is from the 70s. Um, this is one of the more modern books that's not going to be worth much uh, at all. Um, it says the Savage Dragon. Um, you know, just there's nothing real super special about that. And you can see here, there's multiple issues of it. See here, just whoever bought this, bought the, you know, but just probably just, again, this is actually exactly what I was talking about, okay, earlier. This is why books from the 90s aren't worth much because what happened was people went into the store and they bought four, five, six of them and they kept them. And the comic book companies knew this, that people were going to do this. And so they mass produced these giant numbers of these books. So after 20 years, everyone stuck with all of these books and they're not worth anything. 
Okay, compare that to the kid from the 1950s or 19, you know, 40s who picked up a comic book, and he only bought one of them. He only had enough money for one of them. No one was buying multiple books by, back then. So, you know, the other thing is the person from the 90s who bought this book is putting it into, a, you know, there's a board and a bag around it. The kid from the 1940s and 1950s wasn't doing that. That kid was just taking it, reading it, tossing it to the side. It was getting damaged, you know, putting other books on it, stuff like that, which makes it even harder to find old books that are in good shape because of that. So we've got a bunch of these savage dragons here, which aren't worth anything. Um, some of these image, you see the company here, Image. Image is hit or miss. Some of the Image comic book series are, are you know, are valuable, like Spawn, um, but some of them are not, especially this one, Wildcats. I mean, it's essentially a worthless comic book. So, um, you know, things like this, what I'll do is I will lot them together and sell them as a big lot. Like, you know, here's another one, Wildcats. Actually, this is Wildcats number one. So I have in other collections that I bought others of these things and I'll just assemble them together, uh, you know, or, you know, I'll take, see, this is the image company again. I'll make an image lot. So I'll sell like 20 image comic books together. And these are just kind of filler books and I'm just trying to get rid of them. And there are some people who will still buy them. But what I'm trying to tell you is that you're not going to make any primo money off of Wildcat. So, and you'll see these a lot um and three for a dollar bins or at garage sales or stuff like that really not uh, worth that. another one that's really not worth that much is this one here cyber force you know even if you have the first issue no one's really looking for that these really not popular bucks so um we've got a mixture of some books there's just more cyber force so we've got a mixture of some books that are really great and a mixture of some books that um you know are not good um so but you focus on the ones that you know have the most value obviously I'll go back to some of the comics in a minute, but let's talk about some toys. Uh, here's two really great toys that I found. I mean, these are relatively challenging to find. Um, and what you'll see here is these are by Frazetta. Uh, it's Frank Frazetta. Frank Frazetta is, uh, he was um, uh, born in uh, Brooklyn in um, 1928. He's one of the most, uh, world's most exciting fantasy art illustrators. And, um, so he would draw these kind of fantasy scenes like you see on the back and they're very popular to make card sets out of what he has and they also have um, characters that they made like this and you know depending on which one you have and I did look a couple of uh, these up that I have I have this one here which is this uh, character wielding this axe he's like an executioner and I have another one here because in addition to drawing um, scary people with axes who are chopping people's heads off you always have to accompany that with a scantily clad uh, woman in these fantasy series like this. And, uh, you know, so these could go for around, uh, you know, somewhere, but, you know, around $30 or more, you know, depending on how many of them are at the market at the same time. You know, I think the max for something like this might be around 50 bucks, but somewhere in that range, like 30 to 50. Um, so, you know, that's the kind of thing you're looking for. Again, unopened. There's some dust on it, but that's okay. That's stuff you just kind of wipe off and you make it kind of look new again by doing that. So these were two of the ones that he thought were stolen and he didn't realize they were there until he opened them with me for the, uh, for the first time. So we've got those. Um, some other things here. Let's see here. I'm gonna move some of these books aside for a second. And let's go through some more toys. Let me just put these right here. I'll have to reconstruct all this later. But um, let's go through one of these toy bins here. So we've got, you know, we've got Aliens. Okay, Aliens is a pretty popular series, so I'm excited about that one. Um, Aliens versus Predator. I know it's very popular in a comic book series if you have Alien versus Predator, so the toys probably are as well. You know, again, it's really cool. You got both of them there. They're mint in the package. So, um, you know, that's a nice one right there. I like that. Um, anything that has Spider-Man on it or Doctor Strange, you know, those are kind of popular characters that you're looking for. Um, so that's that's pretty good. Um, this is an interesting one here. There's a character called Evil Ernie who has some popularity to him. However, the cool thing about this is what this person did is he made a custom character. So he actually took the character out and he customized him by adding this jacket onto him, which is from another comic book character. So this is now a custom figure that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. And on the back, 
He um, described what it was, an action figure created by himself in 1995, and he basically sealed it back up. So this is actually something that, you know, some collector out there might think, wow, that's really cool. I could be the only one who has this. So this is something that it could potentially, um, you know, go for a lot of money. I don't know until we try, um, but it's exciting, and it's, uh, you know, something I like about the collection that I purchased. So with that... Um, this is a, a bigger toy from the Spawn series, uh, and this is um, um, Malabolgia, okay? And he's just really cool because of his gigantic mouth, you know? It's just really awesome. Um, you know, kids will love some you know, character like that. Again, all of these, or almost all of them, mint in the package. Um, some of these lighter ones are going to ship out first class, but these heavier ones are going to have to go out priority. So, uh, you know, got to kind of factor that into a, the cost. And that's what I talked to him about when I was negotiating. Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper's very popular still, including Alice Cooper comic books. If you see Alice Cooper, horror-related stuff, pick it up. It has a great fan following. Um, there's a lot of Ghost Rider toys in here. This is one example of it. Um, in fact, this box right here... And I'm not going to pull all these out, but just to quickly show you, these are all Ghost Rider toys that are mint in the box. Every single one of these are Ghost Rider toys. Um, well, actually, sorry, on half of the box, they're Ghost Rider toys, like this one. Some of them are glow in the dark. Some of them are not. These feel like they, they are less than 16 ounces, so I think I could get them to go first class. Some of them are with another character. Who's, uh, whose name is Lady Death. She's not super popular. So, you know, some of these toys are not going to be worth uh, too much money. Um, so individually, individually. So what I'll probably wind up doing, which will help move them along a little faster, is I could create little lots. Even if I just combine two of these toys together, that will be enough to complete the sale. Because individually, some of these here are not going to be worth uh, a lot or um, they may eventually sell but it's going to be a more challenging sell and take a while so this is where you want to start combining things sometimes to make good combinations and what i'll do is i'll look and see you know what kind of combinations other people did uh to, you know to sell and i could try to use that to uh, replicate the uh, success for for this box so this box is pretty much done it's all kind of ghost rider toys and uh and lady death toys there um going back um over to this box here, we've got a uh, Spawn, and uh, Angela is a popular character in Spawn. So, um, in fact, if you have the comic book that is the first appearance of Angela, that's worth a good amount of money. So, um, anything um, you know that's a, a Spawn on it, and um, it's um, Todd McFarlane is the is the uh, artist who made uh, the Spawn character after he left Marvel and made a lot of the famous Spider-Man covers. Uh, some of his stuff is worth is worth good money. It just depends. Not all of it is, but some of it is. Um, you know, see here it says McFarland Toys right there. That's the name you're looking for. So just look the piece up. You know, this one here I haven't looked up yet. This is Battle Staff uh, with Wolf Skull. It's a Frankenstein character. I don't know value of it right now. I'm gonna have to look it up. But um, I know it's from uh, you know a popular artist, and there should be somebody who would want to get that get that toy especially being um new in the box like that so we got that we went over alice cooper um earthworm jim i'm not sure what the value on that will be but that's pretty cool uh, he's a um he was a um uh, there was a video game with earthworm jim in it and so that's where that comes from then i showed you the marvel team up comic books and the first issue of Marvel Team Up, number one, which um, I have that book, and that um, book is, you know, about a, at least when I bought it a few years ago, about a hundred dollar book. So this is um, uh, that one had Human Torch and Spider Man on the cover. So this is kind of a homage to that right there. And here's one other thing you're gonna want to look for: exclusive toys that were only sold at certain places, such as Kmart. So for example, there's some good Star Wars toys that were just made at Kmart, and there are collectors that literally, believe it or not. 
even though a lot of people don't go to Kmart anymore, but they literally search for the Kmart exclusive toy. They want that. So um, they'll pay um, good money for that. So look for that. I'm excited about this one, Kmart exclusive, to look that one up, see what that one might be going for, especially since it's an homage to the first ever um, Marvel uh, team-up uh, comic book issue. So we got that. I talked to you about the... Um, the character Venom was the black suit on him, and this is him right here. He's easily identified by the black suit and by the um, uh, the sharp teeth and those um, triangular like eyes. You remember the uh, on the comic earlier that I showed you, Marvel Superheroes number eight. Um, that was Spider Man, and he didn't have sharp teeth, and he didn't have um, and he didn't have the triangular eyes or anything like that. He didn't, look, he didn't really look scary. He just looked like he was kind of surprised that the suit was on him. So that's actually not Venom. That's just the alien suit that later turned somebody into uh, a Venom. And so this is kind of a, you know, an homage to, um, to uh, Venom. And this is something that if I hold on to this, for example, until October and sell the other stuff off first, this will be the primo time that I could get some better value out of this. And that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna sell off everything that I can up and, and kind of hold on to the Venom stuff probably until, uh, you know, until October comes around, which, you know, believe it or not, won't actually be too far away. Um, Harley Davidson, I do very well at Harley Davidson. There's a Harley Davidson motorcycle in here and there's um, some car in here, which is probably not worth anything, but it's just kind of tossed in. And then there's some kind of random out of the box toys um, and, and kind of figurines, but this is the exact type of thing, something creepy like this, you know, with a, you know, a skeleton with a staff and a, you know, and a scythe uh, holding up a decapitated head on top of a skull. Trust me when I tell you, even though it might seem weird and disgusting and gross, somebody's gonna see this, want this, and pay 20 to $30 for it. And, you know, it's gonna be, you know, a ten twenty dollar profit for me so uh because you know this is probably gonna well i don't know might the way it feels it possibly could go out first class but who knows uh worst case it's gonna go out like you know max if it's going to california you know it might cost like 10 bucks to get it out there so but you know that's something i'll still sell dragons are popular so there's a bunch of loose dragons in here like this. So, you know, I think these are probably made by McFarlane as well. I've got to look at the markings down below. Um, yes, they are made by Todd McFarlane. That's the other hint. If you're trying to identify the toys, look down below and you will see markings on it and that will help you figure out who made it. So that one you could see does say that it was, let me flip it the other way, that it was made by um, McFarlane, let me see if I could get that in there for you better so you could see. It's hard to tell if you're on the CO. Well, maybe that will help you. So you could see right there, that's where you would look. Sometimes you want to look on the feet of the character. Um, sometimes you have to pull up, if it's a, a humanoid-like character, you have to um, look right around the waistband area, like the He-Man characters, for example. That's where those, um, those markings are. So we got that uh, right there. Let me just put some of these toys back in here right there so I could just move some stuff around and one of the other things that I found were also cards and I haven't talked to you about the, the, the cards yet but what I look for are not sports cards as I mentioned to you earlier because the sports cards like I said from the 80s or 90s are pretty much um, you know worthless unless you find something pretty rare uh, however uh, what I look for are non-sports cards from the 80s or 90s so things that were about uh, popular movies like et or star wars or rambo um, or garbage pail kids things like that but marvel also made a lot of cards and one of the things you want to look for with the cards is you and people will put them in these hard plastic um containers like this these little um i should say containers but they're like little sleeves this one is a a, a hologram and people collect these uh holograms so basically what would happen, and when, the way you can tell it's a hologram is that it will, it will shine a bit. It's kind of hard to show you, but um, and there is like a shiny aspect to it. And on the back, it will actually say something about it being a hologram. So you see this one says hollow blast. This is, um, you know, uh, something that um, is gonna be desired. It's Deadpool, that's the character right there. Deadpool is very desirable. But, you know, here's another one right here. You know, 
it's a hologram card you kind of see there they generally have like a silver look to it um, kind of a shiny silver look um, with these card sets they'd make let's say for example 88 cards a new subscriber just came in judy carter judy carter welcome if you're watching this i just saw that come across the screen so there you go there's a live shout out to judy thank you very much anyway um what would happen with these card sets is they would make let's say 60 cards or 70 cards and then uh, that's called the base set and then in addition to that there'd be five hologram cards that would be much more trickier to find so if you could find a complete card set plus have let's say the five hollows that's what they call them the hollows h-o-l-o-s that is that will make your card set worth so much more money and i have literally sometimes just had like let's say i maybe i don't have the base set i just have the five hologram cards and i could sometimes sell the five hollows for like fifty dollars so um yeah because they're that challenging to find sometimes so basically this box is filled with hologram cards i'm sorry about the glare but um nothing i could really do about that right now but um geez so yeah, this is just filled with hologram cards. It's not all hologram cards, but that's what is a lot of it that's in here. Um, there's, you know, some Marvel Fleer cards in here, and they're all very well protected inside these hard sleeves. Sometimes they have these um, thinner sleeve, uh, thinner sleeves that are like this. They're like a flimsier kind of plastic sleeve, and things could get more likely to get a little bit of damage in there. But these other ones here, you can feel are, they're, they're harder, okay? So they're not going to really get damaged. They don't really bend. The other ones do. So we got that. Um, now, what's in here, I cannot show you because I'll get kicked off of YouTube if I show you what's in here. Um, what's in here is, and this sometimes comes with people who have horror collections, is um, they'll have some more adult-oriented materials, like some nude types of uh uh, items and these are basically um, cards and some of these like for example this is a playing card set and I can't show you what's actually on the card but I'll show you the back of it it shows they're called um, models of all nations and right here you kind of got this sly looking fox who's kind of winking at you right there because what's on the other side of this are naked women and this is actually very popular because not just because of the naked women aspect to it but because this actual pack of cards was this guy's father's cards when he was serving in the military and what he was explaining to me is you know when he was over or wherever he was or korea or, or vietnam or wherever it was that um you know they're lonely and these cards really help them kind of just psychologically dealing with that i mean they're just around men the whole time and they there were no women and so this is just basically how they dealt with that so it's actually you know there is kind of a historical uh you know aspect to 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 these types of cards and so there is uh you could either sell these on the adult version of ebay or if you don't show the the nudity you could just show like this part of it and you could sell it that way on the regular side of ebay but then there's some other cards in here, which again, I can't show you because they're, um, they're some of the more, more modern cards, but they're, um, you know, there's not, not anything raunchy, but they're just, um, you know, like topless kind of stuff like that. Um, now this is, um, just go back to the cards for a second. This is a set I really like, um, because I want to show you someone in here that you should know. This is, dun, 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 where is she? Okay. Let's see, let's make sure there's nothing inappropriate here. No, just a little, you know, think of it as kind of like a swimsuit issue or something. But this is Vampirella. Vampirella is super, super popular. And this is the complete series of Vampirella cards. And the cool thing about the Vampirella cards when they made them is that if you were able to collect all of them, they would make um, like a little like a it would make like a puzzle that would show her entire body on the back of it and like that okay so you know having all that and being able to display that to a prospective buyer is really um something that they'll desire and they'll want something like that if you could show them that so it's not just vampirella in here i mean that's one example like the whole set of vampirella cards is in here um, i'll take let me tell you something i will take vampirella any day over 
some kind of baseball card or some, you know, from the 1980s or 1990s or, you know, I'll, I'll take Vampirella over A-Rod any day of the week, okay? So, uh, you know, you're going you're gonna, to, um, you know, have you know, good value there. Um, you know, he, I, you know, talked about Venom. Here's Venom in a, you know, in a, um, um, a Marvel series of cards. It looks like a complete set here as well. So we've got that. Um, let's see, some Spider-Man cards. Um, it's just, um, you know, just there's another different type of card set. So they're all kind of animated uh, card sets. So I'm happy about that. And I am, uh, you know, here's one here, the origin of Spider-Man. So excited about the Spider-Man card sets and the other cards that I have here. Let me just see if there's anything else from this box that I wanted to uh, show you. Um, well, no, like here's just like a random kind of Vampirella card. So I'm not sure if there's other ones there, but, um, you know, see if we can maybe do something with that. Um, what do we got here? Uh, don't know. Let's see. Oh, there's Ghost Rider. So here's some... Oh, this is, looks like the, let me take this out for you for a second. It looks like, now I'm going to have to take these and count them out, but he told me they are complete. Um, this is the complete, looks like the complete set of Ghost Rider cards. And what you see here on the back, they have checklists. And you just want to go through and just make sure you have all the cards. Um, just count the number. So if it says, for example, that there's um, 80 cards and then there's 10 bonus cards, you want to make sure you have 90 cards in here. And if you do, you are good to go. These will ship out first class, you know, just wrap them up in a little box and uh, you're set. And you, you'd be surprised how much money you get out of these. Uh, even though they're from the 1990s, um, you could do well with them. Uh, let's see here. Um, and it's just, again, I'm looking at this for the first time with you, with everybody here. So I'm not sure what else we got. Oh, okay. So... Let me see one thing about the cards. Um, okay. So I don't know much about this, but this was a comic box that I found that he had for something called Royo 2. Now, this is something comic related, but as you can see, there's nothing in it. So someone might be tempted to just toss it because the cards aren't there. Don't do that. People will just buy the empty boxes for either display or if they have the cards, they'll want to put the cards in it. And guess what I just found in the box? In a, I found some of the Royal 2 cards. So now I could just sell the original box with this. I don't know the popularity of it yet. I'll look it up, but it's got to have some value. So, um, you know, we'll see what we can do with that. Go back to the comics for a little bit. See if there's um, anything else I could tell you about these comics here. Um, and any like little pointers I could give you. Here's Marvel number eight again, the uh, Marvel superheroes book. So put that there. Um, I do want to tell you about this title here, this comic company, Valiant. Those books are mostly not worth much, uh, the Valiant comic book. So that's a company that came out in the 90s, not around anymore. A lot of companies were popping up in the 90s to see if they could kind of cash in on these collectors that were, you know, trying to um, um, get rich off of all the, all the comic books that they were going to buy out. And again, they just kind of crashed with the market. So there's a lot of these Valiant books in here that, uh, you know, again, don't have much value. So, um, but then again... There's some cool books that are kind of mixed in with this. So I always look for, I, you know, I'm seeing this for the first time with you, but I always look for this brand right here, TSR. They make uh, fantasy books um, like Dungeons and Dragons and role-playing games and things. And almost everything that you could find that's from TSR that's from the 90s or from the 80s is going to have value to it. Um, you know, so I don't know. I haven't had this one before, but this is the first issue Premier issue. In fact, no, wait a minute. It's not only that, it looks like it's the complete set because you could see it's one of four. So we have, it looks like we have the complete set here. It looks like there's four books. Let's see. Yes, there are four books in there and it looks like it's in great shape. It looks like it's near mint from what I could tell. So, um, you know, easy, just put it up. Um, 
and you know, we'll sell that one. Let's see what else we got here. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's anything good I could show you. Um, you know, uh, uh, anything that has Dracula on it, you probably should pick up, even if it's not worth much individually, like this one by that made by Topps Comics. Nothing by Topps Comics is really worth much. Um, but if you have this and you happen to have a couple other kind of random Dracula related books or, you know, vampire related books, you know, you could put it together and you could sell it. Now, this that I'm going to show you that I'm looking at for the first time, 100% will sell guaranteed anything with Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, especially a bloody kind of gory cover like that. There's a big, big market out there for horror. All right, so we've got more Dracula here. Uh, let's see here. You know, look at this. We've got Penthouse Comics, okay? Right there, still, in a, you know, sealed up here, but um, it's from 1997. Don't know the individual value of that, but, um, you know, kind of cool. Look that one up, see if there's any good comps on it and see if we could sell that. Um, now, some things here there's just some stacks of some books um like uh, with certain characters that you should know um this is lobo he is a character that comes from the superman series and he does have a strong fan following i do well selling lobo books but you just have to get little small lots of them even mixed lots like if you have issue four seven nine twelve you could still sell those um you know that's how popular the character is i mean he's not hugely popular but he's popular enough that if you have enough of his books that you acquire in a collection like this you could do really well selling them uh, another one is sandman this comes from the dc vertigo series you see it says dc vertigo up top vertigo is basically a subsidiary of dc that publishes their uh, horror related mature titles um, so as not to confuse consumers um, who are you know, looking for more mainstream books. If they see DC Vertigo, they know, oh, okay, let's kind of stay away from that. That's the, those are the horror-related books. Um, I love seeing something like this. I mean, this is just the kind of stuff that I just live for. Um, it doesn't matter that there's some damage to the book. I mean, yeah, if it's in better condition, it's worth more. But something like this, like this 1,000-page comic book with the classic, you know, Batman and Superman on it and this monster made out of sand and he's coming up and he's grabbing Wonder Woman. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that collectors just, they just dive. They love having something like this and hanging up. So I can't wait to look this one up and, you know, see what the value on it is. It's probably from the, you know, from the 19, well, I don't know, maybe 1970s. Let's, let's actually look it up. Let's see. I'm thinking probably late 70s on this one again we're just going to remove our tape and see crack it open here let's see oh the cover is a bit ripped so that will affect value on it um and it's kind of falling off a little bit 1974 so um yeah it is from the 70s so uh this is probably going to wind up being a uh, a reader copy because you see what happened here with this book and sometimes you don't realize till you take it out but you see the cover now this is this is a problem the cover is separated off like this and you can see pieces are coming loose it's all still there but this is not this is now going to be something that's going to really move down in terms of value because of that but um, someone will just buy this as a reader copy. So uh, it could still be sold, but just not for the same type of price as you would have gotten otherwise if that wasn't there. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's take a look at some other toys. Uh, I'm gonna move this over here. We've got two more boxes of toys to go through. I could tell this is definitely gonna be my longest video. I mean, this is just crazy. I don't know if I'm gonna ever top this. I mean, we're going at about an hour right now. You're probably gonna have to pause this thing and watch it in chunks if you're really interested in it. But let's see what else we got. Oh, this is sweet. Look at this. Venom right there. Nice. That is going to do really well, especially if I hold off until October. Um, let's see if I can get these up. Let me show you some more here. Let's see what we got. We got some more Ghost Rider right there. Now, that doesn't help if I put my hand over the whole thing. You can't see it. But we got some more Ghost Rider right here. Um, 
Probably not going to be worth much. Don't know. Not a usually popular character. So there's going to be some of those things mixed in here. However, this is an item that goes out first class. I might have to combine it with some other things. Rogue is a popular character from the X-Men. So, I don't know. She may sell. We'll see. Um, what do we got here? Some Spawn. Some Spawn-related toys. And this is actually... This box actually goes a little deeper than I thought. Let's see here. This is really cool. This is like a Medusa-looking... Uh, toy so uh, that's really neat that's also from the spawn series curse of spawn uh, just amazing to me all these things just sitting in boxes for decades and you know I'm the first person to get them and crack them open I still haven't told you the price yet that I got for all this so I hope you're kind of hanging on for that because I'm going to make the big reveal on that for a minute uh, pretty soon here's another one uh, this is uh, the crow if you know about the crow this is Brandon Lee Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's uh, son, who was killed during the uh, filming of the movie when he was shot by a, um, by a bullet that wasn't supposed to be uh, in the actual gun during the shooting scene. So they had to make the rest of the movie without him. So this may have some value to it. I don't know. I haven't looked something like this up recently, but uh, you know, it does have some uh, interesting um, significance because of his death during the movie. So I don't know. We'll look this up. Uh, Ghosts in the Shell. Now, Ghosts in the Shell, it's funny. When I started to get back into selling comic books on eBay, um, it, Ghost in the Shell was actually the first book that I sold. Uh, I remember selling it for like $25. It was just an individual Ghost in the Shell book. So this is a popular series, Ghost in the Shell. You might not have heard of it before, but I'm hoping that I could do just as well with, uh, you know, with the toys. I don't know. All right, let's see what else we got. We've got, oh, look at this. Edward Scissorhands. Remember that movie? Well, here's a pretty cool toy from Todd McFarlane. Really, really neat. I mean, you look at the detail. That's what McFarlane's famous for is all that detail. So that's really cool to see that. Let's see what else do we got here. Oh my gosh. I mean, you really are seeing my reaction for the first time. I literally have not seen these things. Because there. the problem was when I got there, there so many toys. I, I just... He even said, you know, if you don't wind up buying them, the way I have them situated, I'm going to have to put them all back in. It's going to take me forever. So, you know, I just kind of had to guesstimate what was in there based on just looking through like a few layers. But this is cool. This is the Wolfman. Lon Chaney Wolfman. That's amazing. Um, you know, still a 1990s toy. This one came out in 1998. But, you know, let's just say, for example, that doesn't have a ton of value. I mean, maybe it does. I don't know. But if it didn't, here's what I'm telling you you could do, and you will definitely sell it. You just combine it with this. You combine it with the Boris Karloff mummy. And now you are gonna have something that does well. This is another popular character, comic book character. You see, by the way, the link between comics and toys, very strong connection. This is another comic character, Hira, very popular. So this toy, Hopefully, we'll have some value to it. You know, it's a bigger toy. So we'll see here. Um, this is Clive Barker. Clive Barker, another famous comic uh, book. Not comic book, but uh, well, he does, he does, has done some comic books. But famous horror writer. So any uh, Clive Barker comic books do do very well. So hopefully the, the toy does as also. And this is another one that I'm not as familiar with. It says Armitage on it, so I don't know much about that one. But we will um, we'll find out. So that's that. That's that box. We got one more box of toys to go through. Um, but before I do that, let me take a look at some more comics. We are going to have, I'm going to have a lot to clean up and put together after this. This place looks like a bomb went off in here. Um, okay, so let's see. So here's some more uh, modern books. This is um, some Ghost Rider comic books. So uh, let me see if there's anything besides Ghost Rider here. This is all Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider related books. Okay, but the point is, is I could take all these Ghost Rider books that you see here, and I can make a nice lot out of them. What I'll do though, is I'll go to comicspriceguide.com and I'll just check them out individually, just to make sure there's not one issue in there that might be uh, one that's worth more that I might want to pull out and sell separately. 
Uh, sometimes that makes more sense to do, so you got to check into that. Um, this is Marvel Comics Presents. Um, this is a more modern book right here. Modern books, so not as much value as some of the other books that I showed you. Um, let's see, maybe, oh, look at this. Spawn number one right there. So that's nice to see. I mean, that is a popular comic book. It's one of the longest running comic books uh, um, um, around right now. I mean, just in terms of continuous series that just, you know, because nowadays what they're doing is they're making these comic book series and they're making them for like 24 issues and then they stop and then they reboot it into a new series. But Spawn has continuously gone on. So I, people like that about that. Um, so there's a few other Spawn books in here. I'll have to look them up because some, some of these... There's some um, important things that happened in the book that makes them uh, worthwhile. Uh, another thing you want to look out for is Spawn issue number 249 because they made a very limited number of them. So they that also has good value as Spawn number one. Um, these are some, uh, now see, that's an, these are an example of image books that aren't worth that much. You know, something like Pitt or Brigade. I mean, these are things you probably never heard of before and for good reason. They're really not good storylines. And as a result, these books right here aren't going to be worth a lot. Um, even something like this, not going to have much value. It doesn't matter that the woman is on there kind of scantily clad. Uh, that doesn't matter. So let's just see. I'll just kind of skim through here. Oh yeah. Another one that's pretty much worthless is uh, Youngblood. So again, I'll put them into a lot. I, you know, I could even just put these whole things, you know, image, because that's the company, image comic book lot, and just, you know, and just blow these out and just kind of sell them that way. So that's, that's another option that you have. Uh, let's go through here. Let's see. Well, here's more Ghost Rider. And this guy, obviously, like Ghost Rider, you could see there's kind of a theme to that with the toys and the comics. And there's just, this is just all, and you can't really see that well, but this is just all Ghost Rider inside of here. So they'll sell. Um, you know, there's just gonna there's gonna be an, um, a nice uh, a nice lot of of books that I'll just put together and just call it the Ghost Rider lot. And so you know, you could put like you know 40, 50 of them together at once and just sell them. Uh, let's see here, the Legion of Night. That's not really going to be anything that has much value. And it looks like we've got a lot of more Ghost Rider books. Let me just flip through it. I don't want to bore you just looking at Ghost Rider books this whole time. Yeah, that's all modern Ghost Rider. I do like that they all have bags and boards on them though, because um, that saves me in cost. Because I do ship every comic book that I send out, I put in a bag and a board. Um, we got Venom number one. That's nice. That's going to have some value to it, uh, especially when that movie comes out. And it looks, let's see, uh, Hellstorm. That's a pretty popular series, and we've got issue number one right there for that. And let's see if we got anything else good in here. Let's see. Um, <laughs> we've got The Incredible Hulk, issue number 400. I've sold this before with an autograph on it by one of the uh, uh, authors, um, but... Um, it's not going to go for much just individually like that without any kind of autograph on it or anything like this. One of my favorite, in fact, actually, sorry, if you're curious, my favorite comic book character, this might come up in some kind of quiz one time on this channel, is the Silver Surfer. He explores outer space on his silver surfboard, and I like him a lot. My second favorite character is uh, Aquaman from DC. He explores the sea, and I love that because, you know, one of the things you, you, know, you know about me from watching these videos, I love to explore stuff, and I love to discover things, and if you think about it, outer space and the ocean, there's a lot of things there that have just never been discovered, and so space is more vast than the ocean, so that's why Silver Surfer is my favorite. But check this out. Um, of all the Spider-Man uh, comic titles that are out there, the one that's the most popular is The Amazing Spider-Man. Look at that one. It's got Venom right on the cover. So that's a nice one right there. I like to see that. And there's some other Amazing Spider-Mans right here. The more, you know, some of the more modern ones aren't worth as much. But Amazing Spider-Man, I mean, that's, um, you know, that stemmed off of Amazing Fantasy 15. Amazing Fantasy 15 is the first ever appearance of Spider-Man. And so when they decided to come up with a um, Spider-Man uh um, comic book, they decide to call it Amazing Spider-Man after Amazing Fantasy. Here we got Venom again in issue 375 on a nice shiny gold cover. So that's cool. That's a giant size 
30th anniversary. I wish Amazing Spider-Man 300 was in here. I'd be shocked if I see that in here because that book could go for hundreds of dollars if, uh, if that's in here. You know, um, again, we got we got Spider-Man in a black costume. And this is a... Um, now, this is not Amazing Spider-Man. It just says Spider-Man on it. This is a pretty common book. Not worth that much in and of itself. Um, it's the Amazing Spider-Man that's worth more. And there's a whole bunch of Spider-Mans that are in here. Now there's Web of Spider-Man. That's not worth much unless you get some of the original ones. But in general, Spider-Man is a good seller. So if you could get a bunch of Spider-Mans, like this one that has Venom in it again, uh, you, you will, you, you'll do well. Spider-Man is one of the best sellers in terms of comic books. So just pick up Spider-Man if you see it. Put it together. And here we got some more Venom. There's issue number two. Remember I showed you there was issue one earlier. So that's two. And now we've got... Well, hold on a second. Let's look at this. Because uh, this is a six-part series. So if all six are here, if all six Venoms are here, that's going to be worth, right now, current market rate on that would be around 75 bucks for six bucks. So we've got one. Let's find out together. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. <laughs> Six, all right there. I'd like to see that. Thumbs up. Um, that's great. That's right there. Just this is going to be 75, 80 bucks right now. I mean, who knows what it's going to be in, um, in October. I'll probably hold on to these till October rather than do the quick cash in on it. I don't know. All right. Um, one more thing of books here. Let's see what we got here. Um, this is not going to be worth anything. Something called Strifes. I'm just going to kind of thumb through it. See if I, okay, there's a bunch of X-Men. Now with the X-Men, there are going to be some certain uh, key issues that I'm going to look for at a later time to see if they're in there that could have some value to it. Um, but, uh, these are all uncanny x -Men. Well, not all uncanny. Some are regular X-Men. Then there's uncanny X-Men. So it's the uncanny X-Men. See, it says uncanny. That's what you want to look for. That's going to be where the more value is, not in something like this that just says X-Men. So you want to say Uncanny X-Men. You see how complicated comic books could get? It could be kind of overwhelming if you're just starting off with it. But, you know, as you gain familiarity with it, as with anything else, you get more of a comfort level with it. And then you could start um, turning that increased comfort level into profits. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, X Factor, not super popular. So again, this is one of these things where you're going to have to have a lot of them. X Factor again, and then there's X Force, which you see here. Uh, so you'll see that cover a lot. This comic is very, very oversaturated on the market, so not worth uh, much at all. You'll often see some of these books in like a plastic baggie. Because that's how they, you know, kind of like this. They put them in these plastic bags. Like, this is how it came, was in a plastic bag from the comic book company. You see that right there? So, um, but they made so many of them that they're still, they really don't have any value. So, you know, they'll have value combined together. Especially if I have something like X-Force and Spider-Man. But, uh, individually, there's not going to be like one book in there that's going to be worth a lot. So you have to use different strategies when you're selling comics. Here we got Morbius again. Told you he's very popular, and we've got a lot of them here. So here's like issue seven. It looks like they're consecutive. So we got seven, we got eight, we have nine, we have 10, 11. So is there a 14? Uh, so there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of these books in here. So a lot of Morbius. So I could do a good Morbius lot. I'm just kind of looking here, seeing if there's any. All right, now, <laughs> there's no way. I, I mean, I'd be shocked if it's in here, but because there's not too many to look through. But this kills me. This is New Mutants 97. Ugh. If New Mutants 98 was here, that's about a $300 book if it's a good shape. Why? Because New Mutants 98 is the first appearance of Deadpool. So write that down. You want to find New Mutants 98. Now, I'd love to see that if it's behind me, but I'd be shocked. No, it's X-Factor. Darn it. I mean, we still have a few books left to see if it's in here. 
but I, I, I'm going to be shocked if it is. But who knows? I mean, there's that, uh, you know, these are all X factors. There was that uh, Tomb of Dracula number 10. Let's see. This is our last stack. And then we'll get off the comics. There's some more Luke Cage. I showed you him earlier. Let's see. Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy right there. Yeah, that, that is more popular now, by the way, because of um, the movie. So, you know, those, those went up a little bit. More towards when the movie went out, though. There's a lot of these Guardians of the Galaxy books here. So, there's some of that. Death's Head. Not that popular. Uh, more Morbius. Um, now, this is great. This is good to see. I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. Um, in, Infinity, uh, Infinity War. And there's something called Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, those are fairly popular, so you know if you have all like you know a whole set of them, for example, you could do pretty well. Here's issue one, issue two, issue three, issue four. So that's good to see. Um, Infinity Gauntlet is the more uh, popular one that you want to look for, as opposed to Infinity War. Here's some more Morbius stuff right here. I mean, he's kind of like a Dracula type of character. And I'm just skimming through, just seeing. Please be New Mutant '98 in here, please. No. No such luck. Boo. All right. Not in there. All right. I mean, I really can't say boo, <laughs> given what I got all these for, but all right. Last thing. There's one more stack. you believe it? My gosh. All right. Um, this is not going to be worth much, I don't think, but you never know. He's kind of like a zombie-like character, but it's because of the company that make it Ultra Force. Although... Galoob is involved in making it, and Galoob is a popular character, uh, popular um, a company. They made Micro Machines, so that is popular right there. Um, who knows if the if the if the toy will be? Um, you can't really go wrong with Catwoman. I love Catwoman, especially the Catwoman from the nineteen sixties uh, um, uh, show with uh, Adam West and um, Burt Ward. That was the best Catwoman of all time. So, uh, let's see here. Oh, I like this. We got the Joker. So, we could combine the Joker, for example, with Catwoman. We got two bad people right there. Um, or we could sell them individually. I don't know. We got Magneto from X-Men. That might be good to sell. He's popular. Gambit, very popular. If you find Gambit's comic books, pick them up. So... You know, we could do all sorts of things. There's all sorts of possibility when you buy this many toys. Iron Man, not super popular, but, um, I mean, when I say not super popular, the books don't have, like, huge value to them right now unless you had some of the real older ones. But he's not He's not as popular. Of course he's popular, but he's not as popular as some of the other um, characters are. Here we got Two-Face, another Batman enemy toy. That's nice. We've got... Apocalypse from X-Men. We've got a couple other X-Men toys here. There we go. I'm just going to show them to you. Phoenix. Phoenix is a popular character. And this one right here. Domino. Not as popular as a character. So it's probably not going to be worth too much. One of my favorite characters in terms of a villain especially when it was Frank Gorshin from uh, the 60s series, is the Riddler. Love the Riddler. So we got the Riddler in here, and we've got Caliban from X-Men X-Force. Um, that one's not going to have as much value, I don't think. There's a few more things in here. Um, oh, this is cool. This is one I did see when I was there, and I looked up. You don't see this often. This is called Carnivores. It's a matchbox car with, it's, this is, let me get this in better light for you. This thing is so cool. I love this. Okay. So, um, basically what happens is the, the head basically comes off as he's riding and the head just kind of flies out. And this is mint in the package. Uh, these things are so cool looking. I mean, kids love to play with something like this. This was just put up, uh, recently and sold for $30. So, 
Um, and there is not one currently available. So this was one of the ones that I did spot check when I was there. And I was looking forward to showing that to you here. Um, of course, we got more Ghost Rider. This is really cool. Look at this toy. Hydro Man. Per the name, he has water and it's like, a, like he has like fists made out of water. And that's kind of how they made the toy. Really cool, big, bold colors. You know, just kind of coming right out at you. Black Cat. It's kind of a, um, you know, kind of a copy off of a Catwoman in terms of, you know, just the name and kind of like some part of the look. Um, not as popular as Catwoman, though, obviously. Um, this one is a Scarecrow from Batman. I remember looking this one up and shockingly, I don't, it's very, this one really doesn't sell much and I'm gonna have to combine it with other ones to uh, to, to sell it. I'm surprised because uh, it really looks cool. But uh, you know, some of them, uh, like anything, some are worth more than others. You know, we got a little Buzz Lightyear toy here. That's not gonna be worth too much, I don't think. And we got some Fantastic Four right here. This is Invisible Woman and you can't see it because it's invisible. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, there she is, Invisible Woman right there. Uh, let's see here. Just some more Fantastic Four Spider-Man uh, character you definitely should know is Carnage. Very violent character, very violent comic book. Um, but uh, he is a Spider-Man enemy and he sometimes is together with Venom. And anything with Venom or Carnage is highly desirable by collectors. And you should definitely pick it up if you see it. There's some more. Um, this is the one thing that was out of the box, which is Evil Ernie. And, uh, but this one is another Clive Barker toy. Um, so we've got that. There's some blood and some gore on that one. We've got Spider-Man and Beast. And we've got the Rhino. We've got Carnage again. So I can combine two Carnages together if I want to. We're almost done. Got like two more toys left, everyone. But this is just crazy. Um, now, this is kind of a mock up of uh, Harley Quinn, but it's not Harley Quinn. So if it was Harley Quinn from DC, it would be worth a lot, but it's not. So that's probably worthless. Um, and then there's another X-Men one. Okay, so that's everything. Um, it's crazy. Um, probably gonna take me another hour just to put everything back where I found it. But, anyway. So, how much did I get it all for? Curious what you guys think right now in your head what I got all this for. And I'd love to see you put that number down in the comment section. Just think about for a minute everything I showed you some of the values I told you, what did I get all this for? Well, uh, when it came down to negotiating, I don't like to be the person who throws the first number. I try to avoid that as much as possible. One, because I don't want to overpay, but two, I also don't want to insult the person. So uh, I asked him, you know, just generally, what do you want? Do you have a number in mind? What are you thinking kind of thing? And he throws out $500. So now at the time, I didn't know those other two comic books were in there. But what I told him was that um, I give him $100 for everything. And he said, well, could you, could you do $150? Now, think about that for just one second. We literally just went from five hundred dollars to one fifty. Now, remember, in my head, I already know that he was going to give this stuff away, and I already know also he needs the room, so he is highly motivated to sell. He's not someone who's motivated to make tons of money off the merchandise. He really just wants someone to take it off of his hands and give him some cash for it. So after some uh, negotiation, um, you know, he said, um, what about 125? Because I said, I really don't want to do more than 100. And I explained that there are some of the toys here that, you know, that, you know, would be tricky to sell individually. Some that wouldn't sell individually. I have to combine them into lots and stuff. I have to store it. 
you know, I'd also make the point, there are shipping costs involved. There is the time involved in processing all this stuff. There's, um, you know, taxes. I'm going to have to pay on it at the end of the year to the IRS and to the state of New York. So there's, um, you know, there's, there's costs involved and he needs to be aware of that too. But uh, that being said, I mean, that's all part of the negotiation. So he said, how about 125? I said, I'll do 120. He said, deal. So I got every single thing here for $120. That's crazy. But these are the kinds of deals that you could make when you are actively out there working it hard making sure you're grinding, you're hustling out there, you know, you got your nose to the grindstone, you got your ads out there on Craigslist, you're willing to walk away from situations because you, you know, you have a lot of merchandise so you could afford to be picky. And then you realize when it is, uh, the time is right to kind of just go out there and, you know, just take a look in person and, you know, see if you can make a deal. Um, this is a good example that um, sometimes what people describe to you is not necessarily what they have. Remember, I thought I was going to see 26 toys and 50 comic books. And I came back with over 100 toys, tons of comic books, and you know, hundreds of comic books, and thousands of cards. Uh, I would tell you that there are there is thousands of dollars worth of um, material here once this is all sold and pieced out. So, um, that's, um, you know, it's going to be fun to do that. So I hope that you learned from this video uh, lots of tips along the way. I know it was really long. So if you stuck with me this far, I really do appreciate that. I'd love if you hit the like button on this one, spread it around to others, let people know about this channel, get some other people to join so we can get these subscription numbers up. You know, I think a lot of people could benefit from some of the stuff I'm trying to, trying to show, some of the knowledge that I'm trying to impart onto people to help you out um, and hopefully get you into comic books if you you know weren't interested in this before it's a good area to get into it could be really profitable with these collectibles you know so if all you're doing is clothes for example start thinking about some some things outside of your outside of your box to uh, um, you know to get into some other things so um, with that you know I mentioned my Facebook group the Facebook reselling resource center uh, please uh, we hit our 200th uh, member today so that I am proud of and it is growing and it will continue to grow if people watching these videos come by, look at the link down below in the description section and, uh, and come and join the group. All you have to do is hit the join button. If everything looks okay with your profile, I'll let you right in and I'll look forward to having you be a member. And um, you know, again, just uh, make sure you're, subs you're subscribing to the channel. And um, that's important just to make sure that we're, you know, we're growing and um, you know, getting the word out there that the Primetime Treasure YouTube channel is the place where you want to go to learn about all sorts of things that are good for reselling, um, not just comics and uh, collectibles, but also other things as well. And then you're also gonna get great tips here. With that, I gotta wrap this one up. This has, again, been my longest video, and I gotta get this one up for you guys, and uh, I gotta clean up this area. I mean, man, this is just, this is like a, this is this this is pretty bad so uh I, I will get it cleaned up though but i gotta focus on that so i hope you all like this and i will see you back just a little teaser i don't stop with my hauls there's something else here this is just a teaser but my next video i'm gonna talk to you about something related to this that i just wound up getting okay this is just a sample you'll find out more in a very soon upcoming video. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.